Okay, if you're watching this video right now, you're probably just like me and have a Toyota Tacoma. And I have been checking out towing capabilities, possibilities. Um, we got a big trip coming up right now. And so I, like you, am trying to make sure that the Toyota, that the, uh, Toyota is all uh, prepared for that. So we've been watching the videos and seeing what other guys have done. Here's what we did first of all. We added Scan Max or Scan Gauge 2 so that I could tell the temperature on the transmission and stuff. The vehicle's off right now, so you don't see that. Um, had no idea where to put this thing, so I had a little plate made up. My son has a 3D printer. We printed that up, it sticks right to the column so I can see the gauge all the time. Of course, for the trailer, I have a tire gauge and uh, it'll tell me we see that and the tire gauge will tell me the pressure of the uh, tires on the trailers at all times and of course we have the furion camera so that i can see the back of the trailer at all times and we've done a couple other things too and we'll be taking this trip probably tomorrow heading out of the coachella valley where i live and the bad thing about the coachella valley of course is there's no place that isn't uphill so this is a Tacoma, it's a 2019 TDR Sport. I'm gonna crawl underneath here real quick and show you what we did here. Underneath, as you will see by the, uh, the clip there, I've done the pinning the transmission trick so that we'll have transmission fluid flowing all the time through the auxiliary cooler that comes with the tow package. And to help with any kind of squat, we've installed the Firestone airbag system. I believe this is the 2407 kit. Uh, there's a 2407, there's a 2410 kit, don't quote me. But this is a 2407 as, as I remember. It's a difference, uh, there's a couple of different kits for the Toyota. One of them is for the axle above the leaf springs. One of them is for the axle below the leaf springs which is this kit here. I think the above the leaf spring kit is a basic four cylinder truck. And what we did here also to make a nice install is inside the frame rails, you can't really tell, but the cross members always, they have a little bit of a hole in there. So inside the frame rails, we ran our tubing through those holes. You can see the tubing here going into the frame rail and to make it extra safe so that nothing could chafe it we went down and got a little bit of uh, clear vinyl tubing from the hardware store slid it over there so i'll never have to worry about these lines getting cut we'll put a t-connector in there's a blank place right next to the license plate so we mounted the uh, line through the back bumper into the step and of course it comes out right there so you don't uh, hit it with your foot or anything. And we can air up the, uh, the airbags to relieve any squat once the trailer's loaded. Okay, tomorrow morning is, that's the big day. We're all loaded up and ready to go. As we said, this is a Toyota Tacoma TDR Sport with the towing package. It has a 1200 pound load capacity and a 6,800 pound towing capacity. The trailer we're using for this is a Rockwood Mini Light. It's a, I believe it's 19 feet. It's like a 21, 22 feet overall from tongue to, to rear end. And the weight rating on here is, I'm not sure exactly where, but anyway, it's on here and it, I believe it's at uh, 4,800 pounds. Uh, which is basically a ton under our towing capacity. We're towing dry. Um, there's no water in the tanks. And uh, very lightly loaded, just uh, for a couple of days, just a few pairs of, you know, a few changes of clothes and some light foods, a few frozen items. We, we eat pretty light. So that's what we're going to be attempting to take out of the Coachella Valley. As I said earlier, everything here is uphill. To get out of this valley is uphill. We're going up through Highway 62, which will be the Morongo grade. That's where we're going to do our transmission temperature tests. And we'll be back with you and see how that goes. OK, 
me, we're on the I-10 freeway. We are heading west up to Whitewater. Getting ready to turn onto the 29 Palms Highway, Highway 62. So far, I've been averaging about 60 miles an hour. I've been following a semi with cruise control. I've got the ECT on. I'm in S4. Uh, the temperature is normal. Running about 2,500 RPM. It has been a steady grade. And I've been maintaining it about 10.6 miles a gallon. So the grade's getting a little bit higher now. Uh, we'll be heading up 62 towards the Morongo Basin. At that point, I'll do my first pull. And uh, we'll see how the temperature on the transmission does. But right now, we are pinned on the transmission. And I'm running at 177 degrees on the temperature on the transmission. So, so far, that's pretty pretty cool. I'm, I'm pretty satisfied with that. We'll get back in when we uh, check back with you when we actually hit the grade. We'll find out how the next two pulls do. Those will be the worst of the whole trip. And those will give me pretty much all the information I want to know. Uh, it is 72 degrees outside, so it is kind of cool out. There is no wind, which is really strange for this area but otherwise uh, anyway if you can see forward we are getting ready to do our, our upgrade hills towards the mountains in front of us and I don't know if you can see the temperature gauge here it's probably hard on the camera but it is 179 on the transmission so that's good news so far Okay, this is the Morongo grade. This is the first actual pull coming up. Uh, we did about a two and a half, three percent grade coming up to the base of the mountain. And the transmission got up to 197, 198. Um, okay, there's our first downshift. Transmission's hitting 204. I pulled um, in the middle of summer. I went up to Lake Hammett on Highway 74. Late in the afternoon, 100, 113, 140 degrees outside, and I never got above. I got to 231 for just a short, short minute. So if I pull these grades and I stay under 220, I'll be more than satisfied. We're currently at 206, still maintaining 50, 51 miles an hour. the end of the pull so we did that hill at 217 that's that's under 220 I am satisfied I think we can make it out of here this summer earlier in the morning and uh, make those pulls and 
and I don't think I'll have to put on another transmission cooler. I think I can do it with what I have stocked from the factory as long as I pin that transmission. One more big grade coming up, a steeper grade. Probably not as long a grade, but that'll be the actual proof positive there. Here we go, poll number two. This is the Yucca Valley grade. I'm not sure, it's at least a mile long, mile and a half. Uh, we're currently at 201 degrees on the transmission. 60 miles an hour, I'm sure that that will fade back before I get to the top. 8.1 miles per gallon, but that is an average. Engine temperature is running perfectly cool. 193 on the water temp, 204 on the transmission, and I believe we'll probably be in, we're down in third gear now, we'll probably be here until the top of the grade. Down to 55 miles an hour. for now well we made it we're officially here in a little RV park a little place just outside of Death Valley's main gates called Shoshone uh, we are on the California side <coughs> we're all set up in an RV space the um, Toyota performed flawlessly um, basically we were in S4 as far as the gears all the way up um, sometimes because of the, the uh, altitude or the grade we we were able to shift into into fifth gear but didn't stay there long it was very rare uh, shifted down to maybe third gear uh, you know a few times because of the grades but overall the car performed flawlessly way better than I thought it would so I am more than happy that this uh, Tacoma can tow at least 4,800, 5,000 pounds. It's rated for 6,800. The transmission at the hottest spot was the Yucca Valley grade, Morongo grade. It did get to 220, and it lasted just a few seconds. It got to 220 at the very top of the grade and went down to uh, averaging between 185 and 190 for the majority of the trip. A couple of times, 201. It's like I said, just depending on the grade. So I am convinced that, of course, it's not summertime here, and that could uh, that could affect things a little bit. But for most people throughout the United States, the temperatures are a bit cooler than they are out here in California and in Death Valley. So I really don't see the need for an auxiliary transmission cooler. If you have a tow package, that secondary transmission cooler on there should be more than enough. So at this point in time, we got anywhere between 7.9 and uh, a little over 10 miles a gallon. It's hard to tell. Most of our stuff was uphill. We went up to 3,500 feet. We're currently sitting about 1,000 feet. And like I said, we came from sea level. So we're just gonna have to find out on the way home 
what the mileage is, average it all out, and uh, and go from there. I know it'll be off a little bit because we do plan to go into the park, and we won't. Of course, we won't be towing there, so the mileage will improve. But um, for the most part, this little Tacoma did everything it said it would do, and uh, I have no qualms about keeping this. I don't see any reason to step up to a bigger truck for the size of unit that I have. So. That's it for now. We'll talk to you again on the way home. Well, the Death Valley trip is finished. Just finished backing the trailer in at home. Uh, we left yesterday afternoon about 1 p.m. Actually, right at 1 p.m. Uh, gassed up and pulled out of the outskirts of Pahrump, Nevada. And pulled back into our exit at um, about a quarter after six so that's like five hours and 15 minutes we did hit some stop and go traffic for the last few miles <clears throat> so probably could have made it right in five hours flat which uh, surprises the heck out of me because normally when we go that direction we take the wife's car and it's a four and a half hour trip so for us to you know between four and four and a half so for us to make it here in half an hour 45 minutes more towing a trailer that's pretty good and uh, we did stop once for for gas in barstow and uh, of course i haven't stopped for gas yet uh since i got home so i don't know the exact mileage for this trip um going by the tank average it's about 9.6 um, i will say however once we got back to Interstate 10 on the last uh, 20 miles of our house, I was actually able to pull fifth gear fine in this truck. Uh, we were in uh, sport mode, we were in ECT mode, and I actually pulled fifth gear with no issues at all, and uh, the mileage came up. Now the trip between Pahrump and final leg of I-10 uh, there were a lot of grades. I didn't actually take the mileage when I got to Pahrump, or when I got to Shoshone, which is just outside of Death Valley, the reason for that being is I knew that I was going to be towing part of it and part of it without a without any kind of weight, just uh, you know, unladen. The truck, for the most part, sat in the trailer park for several days. We did make one trip in to Pahrump and back it's 27 miles each way so that's uh 54 miles round trip whatever we did we probably did six miles in town so let's say a 60 mile round trip and my tank average went from eight something to close to 20 miles a gallon so that shows on average that the toyota actually gets excellent mileage when you're towing though expect your mileage to be cut by 50 percent it's just that's just the nature of the beast so we did a mileage check on the way home I can add the exact figures once I fill up and and do my receipts and figure out how many gallons we actually moved, uh, used during the trip from Pahrump all the way back to Indio the uh, mileage according to my odometer was 271 and so that'll give us a basic overall rating once I figure out that, that gas. And, and I'll put that up on the end of the screen. Now, as for the trip itself, we generally ran in uh, S4. There were plenty of times when we got down to S3 and sometimes down to, uh, or down to second gear uh, on the worst grades. The worst transmission problem we had was leaving out of here on the Yucca Valley grade. Uh, where we actually hit 221 in the transmission, which by my understanding and seeing a lot of these other posts that other guys have done with towing, that seems to be a standard. Um, for the remainder of the trip, we were at uh, in the one, 180s, 190s, which, you know, under 200, I think is just fantastic. Uh, it's my understanding, though, that uh, 221, and I, like I said, I hadn't gotten to 231 once before, is not necessarily anything to worry about in the Toyota. It's my understanding that the new Tundra doesn't even have a transmission cooler on it. And um, 
according to another person that I saw that did a YouTube post, they actually got that transmission over 240 degrees and contacted uh, engineers from Tacoma or from Toyota on that. And uh, they were like, yeah, so what's the problem? So apparently the transmissions are made to run quite a bit warmer than what I would suspect would be uh, safe. So the worst we got on the way home was I think I hit 204. Now we went from elevations from sea level where I am now to over 4,000 feet. And I had intended to do most of my testing on the way home and gas mileage on the way home because I was under the misconception that it would be mostly downhill. I know my parents used to give me a line of bull when, when I was a kid about how they used to walk to school 100 miles uh, you know, there wasn't any snow up here. I imagine there could be, but they used to walk a hundred miles or something round trip uh, every day to school in the snow with no shoes. And it was uphill both ways. Well, except for the snow, I think I found that damn road because I will swear going to Pahrump and then back, it was uphill both ways. Uh, I never, I, I don't remember ever seeing grades like this. And we are west of the Colorado Rockies, so it's my understanding also that there's just no place in the western United States that you don't hit a lot of grades and a lot of hills and things like that. And then maybe east of the Rockies, it's pretty much flat. So, as I stated, once I got on the flat Interstate 10, I was in fifth gear, cruising along like, uh, like nobody's business. Uh, I pulled it, 4,800 pounds behind me, and it's a high trailer. Uh, it's probably 12 foot up there, so, you know, it looks like a flea dragging around a dog, but but um, I had no problems. The trailer pulled perfectly fine. The transmission never really got to where I was concerned with it. Um, the airbags, I ran them at 40 pounds. The truck was a little bit stiffer, but I didn't have the wave action like I did uh, when I originally got the trailer and no airbags, even on the way home from purchasing that trailer, which was only from San Bernardino, 75 miles, I was concerned that I had really made a bad decision. Uh, and it was a white knuckler and I was totally spent by the time I got home. With the Firestone airbags, it was just a Sunday drive. So the Toyota performed well. The mileage was, well, it, it could have been better. I have contemplated the KD Max tune. I have contemplated the OV tune. Um, frankly, on flat out and stuff, I I don't think I need it. I think uh, the shift, uh, the sport mode for the transmission and the ECT power seems to be more than sufficient. The only gear hunting that I found was on a lot of these long grades coming out of Barstow. We um, where we did fill up and then uh, at home now I still I still have three-eighths of a tank left so I don't know how far it is from here to Barstow but but I didn't think it was bad mileage the only problem was that coming out of Barstow we were at about a thousand feet 1100 feet or something like that and uh, there was just the longest grade and you could see it for miles and we got up over 4,000 feet it looked like that last road in the Forrest Gump movie where he wants to go home uh, and you just climb and climb and climb and it's a straight climb. It's no switchbacks, just grades like that. But we were going through the bases of a lot of mountains. From here to Pahrump, that's basically all you do is go up through mountain ranges. Not like uh, forest ranges, it's all high desert. But nevertheless, there are some really steep climbs, a lot of altitude changes. Um, and it seems like no matter which way you go, it feels like it's uphill. You can see you're rising. It seems like constantly and you'll go up and then you'll come back down, but then you'll go up even more and then come back down and then go up even more. So my uh, consensus is if something, if it's something that you want to do and tow constantly, the Tacoma is probably not for you. If it's something that you're going to do like what I have planned uh, to use the Tacoma for occasional towing two to three times a year, maybe only a state or two states away, um, 
yeah, you're going to use some gas. You probably get a little bit better mileage with a bigger engine. But then again, the rest of the year, you got to drive that big truck with lesser mileage. And uh, the gas wasn't too bad. Once we got into Nevada, uh, I think it was a buck and a half less than what we're paying in California in most parts. And then, of course, we were in Furnace Creek. Look at this baby. You don't want to pay this kind of fuel. But uh, we stopped in Furnace Creek, and uh, that's just within Death Valley itself. And, of course, they're going to gouge you there. So, didn't drive the truck through there anyway. Didn't care. So, um, overall, I am satisfied with it. Not sure that the KD tune or the OV tune would do anything extra for me. Um, wherever you're going to go, if it takes you an hour or two hours longer to get there, whatever you're going to see is still going to be there. So, for recreational towing, occasional towing, the Tacoma more than serves a purpose if you do a couple of things for it. Pin the transmission. I don't necessarily see the need for an external, a third oil cooler. Um, if you're towing a lot more, yes, maybe. I may change my mind this summer when I go to Yellowstone because I'll still, for quite a while, go through some of those mountain ranges. My intention is to go early, early in the morning. Um, it's still going to be hot, but. Um, I don't intend to take off out of here at 104, 105 degrees if I can get down into the 90s, you know, low 90s. I think we'll be sufficient. We'll take it a little bit slower, um, make the hills, watch the thermostat, and, and I think that we'll be fine. And once we get into or past Vegas, through Arizona into Utah, yeah, there'll be some grades, but it'll be cooler and it'll be a lot flatter because once we hit interstate 15 it's going to be pretty much freeway all the way until the last hundred miles in idaho so that's all i have i hope that this um, video has been helpful to you i see a lot of stuff about toyotas and, the, and and all the fancy tunes you get i've noticed every time i've ever seen one of those it's it's some guy with a four by four I do not have a 4x4. I have a TDR Sport two-wheel drive. I use it strictly for towing. I'm towing 4,800 pounds. Add a couple 300 pounds for um, necessities. I don't tow wet. I tow dry. So, you know, by the time you put your barbecue in, in an extra tank of gas or extra five-gallon can of gas and different things, you probably push 300 pounds of of stuff and then I usually buy when I get there so I tow pretty much dry but we had no problem maintaining the speed 60 miles an hour was not an issue 60 65 there were times when we got a little bit over and I didn't realize it um, 55 to 60 in towing is more than sufficient don't need to go faster than that I never really got below 50 even on some of these grades and there was some downshifting in a little hunt. I noticed more downshifting if you try to do anything in, um, can't even think of the word, uh, cruise control, excuse me. I noticed a little bit more shifting if you tried to do in cruise control. I had way more control over the throttle and the downshifting issues if I just pedaled manually. So, I can't think of anything else to add at this point. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it was informative to you. If you want to click and subscribe to see other things that I do, I'm all over the place as far as what I post. Um, that's that's fine. And if you have any questions, you're always welcome to contact me and you know send me a message, and I'll be glad to answer anything that I can to help anybody else who wants to tow, uh, uh, you know, with a Tacoma. Um, I'm not one of those video YouTube guys that lives off of this. I'm just a normal guy who has a Toyota and wants to tow and is seeking information on it and trying to help others out. And hopefully others will put information that, uh, that helps me out too along the way. So that's it for now. Hope you enjoyed the video. We'll see you soon. Bye.